So I have my guest here, Sharelle Rory. Oh my God, thank you, Sharelle. <laughs> Sharelle is one of my clients. I love her. She is actually one of my one-on-one clients and she's also in the group coaching as well. And she's just a lovely mm-hmm. person. I've been working with her. I got to know her. She is good with at what she does. She's good with good. I'm telling y'all guys, she does finish. <laughs> she's an author. She's an author to authors. I mean, a virtual assistant to authors. So she helps authors with their books, help them publish their books. This woman is a powerful woman. She has a great story. And uh, if you are an author or you want to write a book, she's the person to come to. So she'll help you. If you check out her website, you'll see that she has written many books. And she just uh, she just published one. One just came out, right? Yeah, uh, two actually. It was two that just came out. Yeah. Yes. My name is uh, Cheyenne Rory and I am a, a client of Tequas. And I think that when I met Tequa, I was very, very new. I didn't even really understand what a virtual assistant was. <laughs> I was we were at an event and I was told to go and talk to Tequa. And I tapped her on the shoulder <laughs> and told her that I wanted to meet with her and speak with her. And so we did connect. Eventually we connected. And uh, I've been under her tutelage ever since. How it happened was looking for extra income. And I was in a group and the leader of the group, when I went to do an exercise, told me that I had some low hanging fruit and that I could easily be a virtual assistant. So I started looking into it and it kind of answered a prayer that I had because I asked God for a way to make some extra money. I have over 30 years experience, administrative experience. And so I was able to take that and turn it into a business. It was not easy. <laughs> it was not easy. But being in coaching group and being under um, Tequa's tutelage, it helped me to understand that the reason why it wasn't working because I wasn't putting myself out there. Nobody, I was a best kept secret. And so one night I did a flyer and I just put the flyer up. And a lady that I knew was running the school and she's like, I need you. (laughs) And so that was my first monthly paying client. And I've just been doing things ever since. And it's been a journey. It took a little bit of time to get my ideal client down back. It's it's been a uh, a long journey and how Tiqua, she stays on you, man. She stays on you about getting that ideal client and she stays on you. <laughs> because her personal client, she said, you're going 30 days live. I was like, 30 days? And I was obedient. I did it. I did it. And it helped me to be able to do live. So now I'm comfortable with doing live because I got better at it every day. I was scared. I was so scared. But then when I learned that to be scared was okay. And when I learned that my way of doing my lives is I have to have talk points. I can't just, I'm not a person who can talk off the top of my head. I can't do it. So I have to have my talking points. I have to have everything written out. And so once I got comfortable with doing that, then I got comfortable with doing vibes. And what I found was started going live, people started discovering me. And so now people are like, hey, I want you to come in and talk for me. Hey, I want you to come and speak on my platform. Hey, I want you to, I heard about you. Can you, can I get some time with you? I want a journal. I want a book, whatever. So it's so important to be, to to show up for yourself and, and to be found. And uh, that's kind of what happened with me. I, I became findable. <laughs> yes. And it wasn't for her to, for that assignment and because just like she said, be obedient. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, I know for me, for coaching, I have to talk to God and I have to pray because he assigns me to people. He assigns us to people. So not everybody is for me, right? I'm not for everybody. Mm-hmm. So when I pray, I pray to God and I ask God to send me who who's for me, who's in alignment with me, who you need me to help so that I can pray mm-hmm. about it. This is why my ideal clients are for female you know, women. And when I pray about it, they understand that. They, when I, I'm talking about the Bible, I'm, I'm um, hoping that the scripture or I say that, you know, what well, we're going to pray about this, you know, because we have, we still have a lot of people who need their mind to shift. These are Christian women. Yeah, and yeah. it's okay, though. It's okay because we are not, everybody's at different levels in their walk with Christ. Mm-hmm. But God puts people in your life to help you, to talk and remind you that I'm going to back you up 
Bible, the Bible says this is not something that I'm making up because mm-hmm. in the Bible, make right the vision, make the plan, plain. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Right, right, business. what is your business? What do you want to look like? Who is your ideal client? This is what we're doing. We're, we're not making stuff up. Nobody made this stuff up. God put it in the Bible already. He already said, mm-hmm. make the vision and make the claim. And this is what we're doing. We're just following what he says to do. And when I'm, when I'm mm-hmm. listening to that and I'm saying that and I'm saying this to my clients, I'm like saying how important it is. Because if God written it into, into the Bible, that's important. This is not something that you want to skip. Okay? You don't want to mm-hmm. you, you struggle when you go down that road and you skip this part. Uh, so it's just like mm-hmm. when we don't connect ourselves with the Bible, we don't we don't struggle because we ain't leaning on God, we ain't leaning on Him uh, for His help. Mm-hmm. So uh, when she talk about the ideal client, like take on this ideal client, the uh, ideal client, I'm very yeah. big on the ideal yeah. client. Yeah. Yeah. And you know why I'm big? Because I struggle with mm-hmm. that. And then when I finally got the coach, got my coach, and she showed me how important it is. And this is the first person that actually. Had me go for an ideal client. All the other coaches I had didn't mention nothing about ideal client, didn't mention nothing about reaching down, no nothing. Oh, I can help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I still don't know mm-hmm. my ideal client. I ain't still reach down. <laughs> I picked mm-hmm. them really hard with that. So this is why Chirelle mm-hmm. is really successful in what she's doing as well because she went through the process. She went through the process of Finding out who her ideal client is, and then when she went, when the Holy Spirit said, "Okay, thirty days," you know, my coach said five, mm-hmm. but I heard thirty. Mm-hmm. Even though she was like, mm-hmm. "What thirty days?" I heard thirty. <laughs> so what what came out of those thirty days? You got for a, a speaking gig. You got clients. Mm-hmm. Uh, so all these things, by being obedient, this is what God shows up. He shows up and he shows out. So uh, yeah. it was Also what came out of it, I think, was I, I had created a course. And so I got some sales out of that as well. Yeah. So it, it was, I wanted to piggyback on what you said about the scripture. And I had already started doing some personal development on my own uh, because there were some areas in my life that I needed to change. And in order for us to, and I have the understanding that in order for us to be successful, we have to work on some of those areas because if you don't, it shows up in your money. And so um, one of the biggest um, scriptures that I had to become acquainted with was Romans 12 and 2, um, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I remember coming to you because I was having a struggle about something. And you said, oh, that's just a mind shift. You need to make that shift. And so once I did that, then things began to change. Because I just wanted to share that. So we have to, because that's all a part of uh, of that vision as well, is that we have to make some changes and make some shifts in how we think about things. Uh, Mm Because if we don't, then the vision won't become very clear. Uh, for us. So we have to make that shift and we have to be transformed by renewing our minds, how we think about things, how we see things, how we react to things, because sometimes in this space, it's not very easy. We don't always get good clients. We pray for good clients, but some you may have slight difficulties with them. And so it's how we able to manage them how we're able to manage our own behaviors and not have them based on how other people act or, or how they speak. Or, you understand what I'm saying? Because some people are nasty, but once you learn their way, then you can kind of work around it. There's a scripture that I love, love, love. And I think it's in, I never can remember. I have to always go back and look it up. But it talks about husbands and wives. And it says, husbands, Deal according to your wife, deal with your wives according to knowledge. That sounds familiar. Yeah. So I took that scripture and I that's how I deal with people, all people. I deal with them according to knowledge. So it's when I learn how they are, how they think, how they move, I say, Oh, okay. And so I, I move accordingly. And that's how I'm able to 
get along with everybody. That's how I'm able to manage people because I can see very clearly, you know, how they are and how they act. And so I, I move and I act accordingly. And so my, my point is, is that if somebody is mistreating you or not speaking to you in the utmost respect, if you know that that's how they are, then you can't be upset about it mm-hmm. because you're dealing with them according to knowledge. If you understand that this is how people are, then you can't be upset. Mm-hmm. Brings you so much peace in your life if you just move like that. Yeah. So that's the nugget. <laughs> that's your sure it. That's, that's you, a nugget. Yeah. I'm glad that you men- mentioned that because whether you are an online business or not, you still have to work with people. If you're not mm-hmm. a people person and you're able to work with different types of personalities and things like that, then this is maybe mm-hmm. not. Now, I say that mm-hmm. because we are we executive assistants, right? I'm a senior executive assistant, so just that's the way. At our nine to five, we have to deal with all types of personalities. Yes. So we if they something or talk to you in some kind of way. But all I know is that I learn and what I know is because of who I am, you know, the Christ mm-hmm. in me, sometimes we can't react to that mm-hmm. because who you are don't got nothing to do with me. So mm-hmm. if that's who you are and you miss doing that, then I'm not going to play into that. And I know that my clients mm-hmm. think that because they never see me, and I'm saying clients as far as my nine to five, we call them clients. They mm-hmm. never see mm-hmm. me sweat. They was like, Tiqua, the one thing that I could, the, the, the mm-hmm. one great thing that I can say is that I never see you crack under pressure or never see a, right. a, a sad, sad smile. You smile about everything. So even if you have mm-hmm. a lot of people at your desk, you're there, you're calm. But this is what we do. We're gifted with that. We're able to mm-hmm. manage the situation and not get fragile by it because everybody else is doing that. This person over here is having technical issues. Oh, the international line has just got cut off. Oh, I need you to go get these copies and all that stuff. If you're not, mm-hmm. if you're not able to do those things, then you're not going to be able to like manage your business as well because yeah. you're going to be dealing with other people with, with different personalities. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do? Mm-hmm. You want to be like, oh, I don't want to work this one. Then you you want to be out of business, <laughs> okay? Right. What the ideal client is that you're dreaming up and visualizing, and you and you pulling and attracting your ideal client. But you also, God does place other people in your life too. And it's not to make it visible. It could be a test. And mm-hmm. a lot of people are a little test. <laughs> and, they got, and they wonder why they're not prospering their business because they keep failing that test over and over again. And I don't keep like failing that test. That's right. <laughs> Me either. Me either. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> not, especially not from God. It's like, okay, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to tell me no more. <laughs> like, oh my God. Uh, let me open up my eyes. What are we supposed to do again? <laughs> no, honey, I don't like those kind of tests. <laughs> but I was, man, I, I've been on my job for over 20 years, my nine to five, and I used to hate it. I just was like, oh, I was so miserable. Mm-hmm. But once I started understanding about my business, then I was was able to look and say, you know what, they do things and they operate the way they operate because they are a business. So I started to understand that. And then I started to understand that my business and my job helps to fund my business. And so when I started, again, making that mind shift, then things started a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, yes. it's a journey. Life itself is a journey. And it's, it's all in what we make of it. And I encourage, especially the, the younger ladies that are coming you know, behind us, but I encourage all of the ladies in this group to hang in there, specialize in something. When you specialize in something, then you can really, really make your place, leave a footprint because then you can kind of demand your own prices and stuff like that if you specialize in something. When I first started out, I was doing everything. And I was like, I don't like doing everything. I don't like some of the stuff that I had to do because Mm -hmm. especially when you're, you know, doing the hourly thing, I didn't like that because I was working so hard. And and if I work, it's like they would give you 
so much work in an hour and then I walk away with $30. I'm just like, I'm upset because I don't work like a slave. <laughs> and then I got to take your attitude too. So I don't, I don't like this. So I kept at it until I was able to really find that niche and find, you know, that client. And how I was able to do that is people started asking me a lot, you know, how you do this and can you do that for me? And, and I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be because I am an author. So I understand different things and I can do the, the editing and the publishing and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I'm supposed to be. And so, and this is where I'm growing and, and I love it. But working those hourly positions made you stronger. Didn't it make you stronger, like now being firm on your prices and making making it more of a package and actually charging yeah. with because when you think about all the stuff that they was packing in that one hour for thirty dollars, and like you said, you got mad walking away because that thirty dollars. I said, "Oh, it's going like that thirty dollars." I mean, mm-hmm. shift that mindset. Okay, something got to change. Uh-huh. Something's got to change. That's right. That's right. right. It did make me stronger because I was, like I said, because I was new. I just kind of accepted things and. I was afraid to ask for my price. I was afraid to ask for, you know, the money and stuff like that. And I would just have an attitude, no more attitude, because it, it doesn't do anything for your inward man. It doesn't serve you at all. You you have all of this animosity and the people going with their lives and they don't even know why you're upset. So, yeah, it did make me stronger. So now, so I um, I'm not afraid to ask for what I want anymore. And they could either give it to me or they're not. And, and, and I'm at the position now where I don't have to accept every client. That's where I'm at now because before I would take everybody and I would go through so much, especially the people who don't want to pay and they want a payment plan and stuff like that. Those mm-hmm. are the ones that took me through it. Yeah. And, you know, when I was calling myself, giving people a break and stuff like that, they were the worst clients. So now I've I don't do any of that stuff and <laughs> I decide who I want to work with and if I see where it's going to be a problem listen I'm not going to waste my time I had a young man he asked me a couple of years ago and he he wanted me to help him to write his book and he wasn't ready at the time so he came back to me last month and I said are you ready this time he said yes I said okay this is my price he said okay no problem I said, all right, I need you to meet with me on Zoom. Send them the link, no show. Oh, I, I had to go pick up my sign, blah, blah, blah. Send them a link another time, no show. So he still had another excuse. I said, all right. I said, do you understand that you have wasted my time and that my time is very valuable and it cost? I said, do you know that I could charge you for having me sitting here waiting in half an hour for you to show up on the Zoom? I said, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to send you the contract. If you don't sign that contract and send me the deposit that I'm asking you for, then we are not going to have a book. He did. I sent him the contract. I never heard from him no more. Mm -hmm. Because I told him, I said, you're not going to waste my time anymore. And I'm not in the position to where I need your money like that, where I'm going to take whatever you're going to give all kind of foolishness for that little bit of money. I'm not doing that. So I have grown to where I can decide who I want to work with and who I don't want to work with. And that's the wonderful thing. Because it's going to be a problem. Yeah, it is. Because it was already, it started out already. <laughs> I was just sitting there. Yeah. I think you want to meet with me, you mm-hmm. got to pay $50. You want me to send you another good one. That's it. Hey, mm-hmm. So when you start putting me that, up front and set your boundaries, that's when you start weeding mm-hmm. other people that don't want to pay you, yeah. want to pay payment plan, and all that stuff. This is why the client experience is so important. And I know that you and Keisha did the client experience workbook, which is excellent. I thought that was a great, great, great idea that y'all did that because a lot of people don't know the importance of the client experience. When you take the mm-hmm. client experience from uh, in your in your system, they will see they will see. Okay, this girl ain't playing. This girl gonna cost money, and all this effort into making this the system. And by the time I get mm-hmm. there, you want clients who's gonna say yes, I got the money. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. the best time to, to put into the climate clearance to make you feel like on VIP that this is a treatment that mm-hmm. I'm going to use that front how you want to treat this, this, this customer, this client already. Mm-hmm. So about the time that client mm-hmm. to you, they're ready to pull out their credit card and they're ready to pay you. Mm-hmm. So that was a, a great job that you did on that. Um, yeah, it, it was helpful for me. It put me in the, the, the mind frame of starting to streamline how I do things. And, and it'll make my life so much easier because I was doing everything manually and in different steps and stuff like that. So just working uh, with Keisha on that book, that workbook was very helpful because it helped me to understand how everything should be flowing. And now I'm doing everything I can to make sure that it's flowing right because it'll free up some time. A lot of time. A lot mm-hmm. of time. Just you guys. Well, this is great. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> so tell everybody how this is in contact with you, how this works with you. Well, I'm around. You can reach me on Facebook, Child Wolf. I am, and my business page is a virtual way professional services. My website, is shiellewory.com uh, or virtualwayprofessionalservices.com. Either way, shiellewory is kind of easier to use. It's all the same website. And I'm on IG under Shiellewory Incorporated. And I have a, a widow page as well. So look that up. Like I said, I am an author and I'm a virtual assistant who works with authors, speakers, and coaches. And I do administrative services for them helping them with their books and publishers. I work with them uploading and scheduling and, you know, stuff like that. So I enjoy what I do because I love to see people's dreams come alive in, in their book. So that's, that's why I like it so much. Great. And that's pretty much it.